Okay. Uh, please welcome um, Chris Sevenbergen. We'll uh, present the introduction first. Please welcome Chris Sevenbergen on the stage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pop-Up. Uh, thank you for uh, organizing this, this seminar. Um, and maybe the slides which I would present can be shown. Uh, the reason uh, this, this seminar is being held is that uh, we see that uh, in particular in Bangkok, uh, there is uh, an interest to, uh, to further upscale uh, the amphibious architecture. And uh, we want to discuss with, with us all, in particular with the experts from the Netherlands and from, from India. We are very happy that, that you are here to see what is really needed to, to get it, to get the upscale. And, uh, and, and that is, I think, the, the, the objective of this, uh, this, this seminar. And we're also happy that Mr. Congress is here because you are one of the very early uh, advocates of amphibious architecture. You were there when we organized Arcadi, and you helped us also to get uh, sponsorship from the industry uh, to support the conference. Uh, so we also see that in uh, in Thailand and in Bangkok, there's interest from the building industry also to uh, to really help uh, yeah further upscaling arch architecture from uh, amphibious nature. So my introduction is is a very rough introduction. What you see in the background is some indigenous technologies, indigenous houses, uh, which are uh, a very good example of uh, amphibious architecture. It's a very beautiful uh, museum. It's, uh, I think, 50 kilometers outside of Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And you see even uh, the, the, the ones, uh, not the static ones, but also the dynamic ones and the real floating uh, indigenous architecture. That is, I think, very inspiring. And that also tells a lot about why, uh, why this architecture is so relevant for um, for uh, Bangkok and and uh, the, the new build up areas in Bangkok. Uh, the next slide, please. Maybe I should put on yeah. the. Maybe you can stand. Well, this is a, a, a very cross section of some design made by Mr. Chalet. And Mr. Chalet and uh, Kun knows him very well. He is one of the architects associated with the ASA. Uh, 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 and he was also very much advocating amphibious architecture, particularly along the floodplains of uh, the, the, the big river systems here. Uh, and what I understand, some of his projects are now about to be constructed, uh, but a, a lot is still uh, not approved and is still pending. Um, so this is a bit uh, what I would like to show of um, of the introduction in, in, in the context of Thailand. But what, what I would like to, uh, to achieve at this seminar is uh, what, what can be learned from practice. Eh? That we can say the technology is, is already there, particularly the technology for uh, single houses uh, are, are quite, quite well demonstrated. Uh, but uh, yeah, still we, we need to, to learn from practice and, and uh, particularly from the implementation. So what are the lessons we can learn from those? And I'm very happy that uh, Kuhn Oldhuis is also with us because he has uh, a, a track record uh, on, on, on this and has designed um, amphibious houses, which have been built already. And the second question would be, okay, if we, uh, if we agree that we have to learn from practice and there's a lot to learn from that for needed for upscaling, how best can we can we do that? How can we best collaborate and exchange experiences and the scientific knowledge? So these two topics, uh, I think, are very relevant uh, for today. Now, maybe uh, some some uh, some very short impressions. This is a floating greenhouse which has been designed. I think it's about twenty years ago, boom, and and that was being meant to. Uh, to uh, yeah, to use our polder systems uh, in 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 a multiple way. On the one hand, our polder system should give them back to to water, uh, serving a water retention purpose, but also use it for for yeah for for agriculture. And and this was a, a, a an idea a concept which we which we started 20 years ago. And what what came out of it is 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 very limited. We we built a first pilot. Uh, and the pilot is still there, it's still functioning, the, 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 the technicalities are, are okay. 
but still, uh, this system is not there. And, and maybe we can uh, discuss a bit one of the reasons uh, why it is not there, which has to do, of course, uh, with the, 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 the economy and economics. But uh, there is much more to say about that, why, why did, did it not really get upscale? Then, yeah. Then another project which was in the, in the early days was uh, an area in, in Dordrecht to start. Uh, and uh, you can see on the right hand side that 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 uh, that area which needs to be which it's a brownfield, and uh, which is now. Uh, by the way, developed and, and also some floating homes of Poon are, are already there. But you see it, uh, one of the designs on the uh, right hand corner made by Robert Barker. Uh, and, and, and yeah, we can say, OK, it took maybe 10, 15 years to get really something done there. And uh, so the lead time of, of this, 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 you can say, advanced uh, technologies is quite long in the Netherlands. Next, next slide, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, now, now this one is a bit, uh, you can say, uh, obsolete because uh, everybody has seen this. But as far as I know, this is one of the largest scale, uh, you can say, pilot project because it still has a sort of uh, a label as a, as a pilot project. Um, this is one of the largest scale projects, and I haven't seen much bigger after after this development. Uh, uh, there are some new projects uh, being realized, but I would say in principle there are no uh, not more innovative or more advanced or uh, at a larger scale than 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 this type of than this project. So that is a bit the situation in the Netherlands. And the next slide, please. Okay, can you can you use that? This is uh, the Lift House project, which was uh, also supported by uh, Elizabeth English, and it's an amphibious house in Bangladesh. Uh, it's still there, it's still functioning, uh, but uh, can you go over it with the next slide? It is also with this uh, very uh, yeah, low cost materials and, 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 and uh, bottles, and you, you can see here, very inexpensive. But as far as I know, there is no upscaling. Uh, the project has been very much promoted, a lot of political attention, uh, but uh, yeah, for some reason it is not being being upscaled. It's still uh, it's still there, but but no really uh, uh, follow up. Next slide, please. And you see here a bit about the construction. Uh, very simple materials, very simple construction, but on on and quite fancy as it is real amphibious. Eh? It, it, most of the time it rests on on uh, on land and dry land, but when the river is, is going beyond its uh, borders, then, then it starts to float. Next slide, please. Now, I want to show you a project which, uh, which is about to get upscaled in Bangladesh. And maybe we can also discuss a bit uh, yeah, what is really needed to get it upscaled. But this is a, a pilot area in Shiranganj. You see it, uh, it's somewhere there's a dot uh, a bit in the, in the upper part of this, this, this figure above Dhaka. And, and this is an area which is regularly flooded uh, and uh, which uh, yeah, accommodates, say, a, a few small villages. And uh, these villages are, are, yeah, are quite suffering from more frequent flooding. Uh, and it's uh, on average about 150 days per year uh, there is water on, on, the, on their land. Next slide, please. And this gives a bit a closer uh, view on that. And there you see there are two projects, an, an amphibious house and uh, a retrofitted house. So an existing uh, house which has been made amphibious, we amphibiate that house, so to speak, and a new built up amphibious house in this area. Next slide, please. Now, this is a bit uh, um, how that area looks like when there is uh, high water. And what we see is that uh, the, the, the villages, they have to raise the floor level uh, every other year, huh? there is there is uh, a continuous effort to 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 keep the water out. Next next slide. 
Now, this is the amphibious house that had been built over there, and this is uh, in times of uh, high water. Next slide, please. This is uh, how it is constructed. It's all with local contractors and with local materials, except for the EPS. Next slide. Uh, now, the, the technology is, is, is a proven technology. It's, 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 it's ap applied at, at, at several locations. Next slide, please. And this is how it is built, a very simple platform. Uh, just to demonstrate, uh, or at least to show the, the local community uh, um, that it really works. Next slide, please. And this is an amphibious toilet. Uh, uh, I'm frankly not a very much in favor of this technology because it, it takes a lot of space. Uh, but sanitation is one of the major issues uh, in those uh, villages where you have uh, regular flooding. Uh, how to uh, prevent contamination, how to keep the water quality in a good condition. So this amphibious toilet was also uh, yeah, constructed because the community was really asking for it. Next slide, please. So this is a bit the technology, what you see. It, 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 it not only uh, uh, is a floating toilet, but also the whole water treatment system is part of this, is, is, is floating as well. So that also means that when there is high water levels, there is no really contamination. Uh, now, the problem of this toilet is that, that it didn't work very well. Particularly the females did not like to go to the toilet because it is in the center of the village. And it is like you're going to a sort of uh, altar. It's very visible that you go to the toilet and that, yeah, make people a bit, yeah, you can say reluctant to really use it. So we can say this technology from a technical point worked quite well, but from a social point, it was really uh, absolutely uh, a failure. Next slide. Here you see uh, another picture. Next slide, please. Now, this is the amphibiating process. What you see here is that is an existing, uh, existing uh, local house where the floor is being uh, made uh, buoyant. So, uh, and, and the local community helped with the construction. So what they frankly did is they collected uh, bottles and they used bottles to uh, put it underneath a wooden floor. And uh, yeah, and then when there's high water, the house of course stays where it is, but the floor is, is, is raising. Next slide, please. You see here uh, how, how, it's, how, how, they, how they made it. Next slide. And this is the situation where during a flood, and you see that the, all the contents of that house were preserved, were, were staying dry. Uh, and yeah, I don't know whether this is something which, uh, which can be improved, but I, I certainly uh, would, would challenge designers to, to improve it. But the homeowners were very satisfied with the design and, and really uh, were very, very happy. Next slide, please. And here you see that um, um, uh, the, the guy on the right hand side is showing the water depth uh, 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 during that flood. And uh, also we, of course, interviewed those uh, homeowners and they were really very motivated uh, to, uh, to work on, uh, yeah, on upscaling this technology. Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the house after a few years. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a bit what I would like to discuss. You see in that small village, there are some uh, local factories. In this case, uh, they, they made uh, this type of carpets and, and, and cloth. And um, they, uh, when there is a flood, they, they, cannot, they cannot produce. So the whole... Uh, their whole production capacity is very much restricted due to the, to the high waters. And they are very much interested to, um, in those amphibious platforms. So we are now about to start a, a simple project where we use the same technology. And uh, one of the major interesting thing is that they, um, the, the, the owners of the factory are also willing to pay for, um, 
for their floating construction. Because they made a simple calculation, they know a bit what is the square meter cost of that amphibious uh, house. They know the production loss uh, each year, and they uh, estimate that they can pay back uh, the uh, total investment within seven to ten years. So that was for them uh, uh, a very, yeah, you can say, uh, interesting technology. But the, ch the, the challenge is, of course, how can we uh, get the, the investors or the banks or micro credits uh, in place to really support uh, those people? But uh, it, it really shows that there is a, a need and interest and the technology is there. Next slide, please. Okay, now I, I would like to stop here. I, my, my conclusion so far is that we have a lot of pilot projects uh, across the globe on amphibious housing, uh, and which also demonstrate uh, that the technology is, is, is there. Huh? There is no, of course, there are, are, are still a lot of challenges also to improve the quality, like the, the, the retrofitting project, there's much to do. Uh, but what we see that after the pilot project, uh, yeah, there is no upscaling. Huh? It, it, remains, uh, it remains a challenge to get it upscaled. Now, what is needed is also very much what uh, Paul Pot is advocating and also the both deans. And we need to really um, build on, on the knowledge we have. And we need, to, we need to aggregate the knowledge and we need to combine the knowledge. And we have track records on, on various projects where we look into the cultural and economic and geographical conditions. So there is a lot to share, a lot available, which is really needed for upscaling. But I also leave it up to you uh, and what you, what you feel about, about this statement. So my, my plea is that, that we are lacking uh, a mechanism to, 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 to exchange the knowledge, to really use, use the knowledge also may, maybe to reach out to the decision makers and the investors. But I think that is the step we need to take now, uh, rather than investing much more in, in, in the technology and, and in the single housing uh, pilot. So I'm very much in favor of what is now on the table to, to investigate a larger scale uh, project at both uh, campus. Uh, so um, yeah, that is what I want to say. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for the subscription. Yeah. Mm-hmm.